All right, so I would start a new part of your notes. We're just going to do a bunch of uh, problems, example problems, conceptual problems, that sort of thing, just to kind of solidify everything that's going on in the units. First thing we're going to go over is 211, which is all about secant lines and tangent lines, the limit definition of derivative. All right, so if I had a problem where it said the limit as h approaches zero of x plus h quantity squared minus x squared all over h. This is basically a super fancy, overcomplicated way of writing what? Who wants to help me out here? Of x, the derivative of x what? Just the derivative of x? Oh, no, it's the derivative of x. Right. The derivative of x squared is what I was looking for. Yeah, yeah. So this means the derivative of x squared. And this would be obviously equal to 2x using power. Okay. But what happens if I replace all of those x's? Let's do this with like, I don't know, it doesn't matter. Um, like a three. So three, three here, okay? Well, that just means the derivative of x squared when you're plugging in x is equal to three. So you have a little line there and it says x equals to three. Um, you wouldn't need this anymore. It would just be two times three, okay, which would be six. Okay. So all I did was change the x there. I just don't want people to be confused on that, okay? So let me give you an example problem and uh, we'll see how we do here. So what happens if I gave you one where it was like the limit as H approaches zero of negative two plus H cubed minus, uh, or let's do plus eight to try to trick you. And then we're dividing this all, whoops. Why did it do that? And then we're dividing this all H. Okay, now what would this translate to? Okay, this is the derivative of what? As x equals what? Um, not two, not two, because it's a negative two right here, right? Right, and then a minus minus would be what? Wow. Yeah, very good. I was trying to trick you on that. So very good, negative two. Okay, and then what did you say, sir? X cubed. X cubed. So we're doing the derivative of X cubed and then plugging in negative two. Okay, so you can think of this as uh, it's going to be three X squared, but you're plugging in negative two for the X. It's going to be three times negative two quantity squared. Okay, which would be 12. Are there any questions on that? You do have to know how to do this. I'm gonna give you some more though, but just wanna make sure everyone's still on the boat for this. Okay, one thing I do wanna go over really quick while I remember, cause I just, it's easy to forget this kind of stuff, but you have to understand how to use math eight. Okay, there's going to be some problems where you need to use your calculator on it. So um, make sure you do know how to do math eight and set this up. Some people don't have an 84, so it looks a little bit different for them. Um, so X to the third. And then we're plugging in, I think it was what, negative two. Also understand that uh, the calculator is counting. It's not like actually calculating them out like we do it. So because it's counting, sometimes there's a counting error on that. You have to ignore that 0.000001, okay? Understand that that's just part of the error of the calculator, okay? Do not write that as the answer. It would be more wrong for me, or maybe I expect you to know that. Okay. Are there any questions on anything I went over so far? All right, cool. Let's try another one here. Let's do the limits as H approaches zero of E to 
the three times two plus H minus E to the sixth all over H. All right, so this is really the derivative of what? Is it e to the x? e to the 3x, I like that. But there's a 3 right there. Who said that? Who helped me out? Thank you. Um, and then x is, um, we're plugging in what for x here? 2. Okay, an easy way to see this is if it was e to the x, then you'd be plugging in 6, but there's no 6 over here because it's, it would be 6 plus 3h. Okay, so try not to get that confused. Um, it's probably easier to look at, you know, where there's normally an X right there and just kind of imagine it. Um, but you do have to find the two from there as well. So it kind of makes it a little bit easier. All right, so what is the derivative of E to the three X? What rule do I need for that? Just yell it out. Exponential power rule and chain rule, thank you. Okay, so the derivative of e to the x, e to the three x, I'm sorry, is itself times the inner derivative here, which is gonna be three, so you need power rule for that. Okay, um, and I think you can do this. I really don't know, actually. <laughs> I've never seen it, but I feel like it makes sense. I don't know. Um, I just didn't feel like rewriting all that. Um, so then you just plug the two in there and you get three e, that's embarrassing. Three e to the sixth. Okay. Let's say this was a calculator problem. You can do math eight x. Oops. E to the three x. Okay, and we're plugging in. Was it two? We're plugging in two. You get some crazy number, but you can always just write three e to the sixth and see if that works to be the same number. Okay. It is going to be off by a little bit, but again, you have to know that it's because it's counting. The calculator's counting versus it's a different algorithm for each of those when it's calculating. You know? All right. Am I going too fast? Should be a review, but just really want to kind of hammer this home. Now, one thing that is often overlooked by me and students is the alternate limit definition of derivatives. So I'm going to go over that as well. What I want you to see here is that what I'm writing down is actually similar to what I had written down previously. So these, this one here is going to be the same as this one here, only I'm just writing in the alternate, alternate form. So we have e to the sixth, and then we're just doing x minus 2. Um, guess you could do 3x minus 6. Really, you shouldn't technically do that. Never mind. Don't do that. Okay. It's still changing y over change in x. Okay. The f of x for this one is e to the 3x, which is always the first one there with the uh, limit, the alternate limit definition of derivatives. Eventually we're gonna be using L'Hopital's rule on this because it's way easier to do that. Um, L'Hopital's rule, if you remember, um, it's covered in the next unit, but I kind of talked about it a little bit. If, if you get a zero over zero by doing direct substitution, which we would, you get zero over zero or infinity over infinity or negative infinity over infinity. What you can do is do the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom and, uh, Whatever it comes out to from that, as long as it's not a zero over zero or infinity over infinity, that's your answer. Okay, so we have zero over zero here. So what I can do is do the derivative of the top, which is gonna be that three e to the three x. What's the derivative of e to the sixth power with respect to x? Thank you. Is that Logan again? Okay, sir. Very good, thank you, sir. And then what's the derivative of x minus two? Thank you. Is that Hunter? Oh, you back there. Thank you. Sorry. Okay, one. Um, so now if you notice, we do not have a zero over zero anymore, which is awesome. So now we can do direct substitution. You just plug the two right in there and you get three e to the sixth, which if you 
Remember, it's the exact same thing I had before here. Okay, just showing you the alternate form. But the easiest way to do it, rather than like getting all like bogged down, like, okay, hold on, that's the alternate form. It shows up every other test, but I don't know what's going to show up on this AP test because last year's AP was during the remote, so I actually don't know what's going to be personally either. Um, usually I tell the students, hey, last year it was the F of X plus H, so this one it's going to be the alternate. They just switch the flip every year. I don't know what they're going to do, so assume the worst. All you have to do, though, is do the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom. And now, if that's too much for you, it doesn't matter because we're going to go to the next unit. Um, the next unit, the first thing we go over is this, L'Hopital's rule. Um, so if you're like, whoa, what's he doing? Why is he showing us the next unit? It's just because it's related. Um, I'm not trying to expect you to master it or anything. The derivative of e to the sixth is a constant. Okay, It doesn't matter if it was 10 million trillion. It doesn't matter if it's a huge number. The derivative of a constant, it's constant. It's not changing. Derivative means the slope of a point, the slope of a tangent line, the instantaneous rate of change. If it's not changing, it's zero. E to, the, e to the sixth is always e to the sixth. It's never changing. That's why it's zero for the derivative. Um, all right, let me try to trick you now. Let's go with the limits as h approaches zero of, here we go, ready? It's going to be ln of x plus h quantity squared, oops, got a little minus one in there, sorry about that, uh, minus ln of x squared minus one all over h. So I just want to know, what is this equal to? Like final answer, what is this equal to? And you can just say it out loud because writing that in the chat might be, might not look that great. Minus one times two x. Okay, very good. So really what this means, and if you want to just shoot right to it like he did, that's fine. If you want, you can re rewrite it to this. Did you rewrite it by chance? Yeah, I did. Okay, cool. Um, now you'll notice that you have chain rule. So you have one. So the outside layer is right here. It's going to be one over whatever's here, which is what he said. And then he said multiply it by 2x because you have to multiply it by the layer here, the derivative of that layer. And then you have this final answer right here. Okay, you can obviously simplify it if you want, um, but it doesn't take that much to do that. Questions on this one? All right. Um, I feel like this one's going to be too easy, but it's probably a good logarithm practice. So I'm going to give you one more. Sorry. I mean, we're going to be doing a ton of these, a um, ton of other problems too. Not that this won't be the last problem we do today. Okay, this one's a completely unrelated one from the one before it. Don't don't let the LN school you. Who's got this one? Okay, I got one person getting zero. Anybody else? We can throw this one in the chat if you want, because it's got a, just a value. It is zero? Okay, um, what if I rewrote this to be this? I was going to skip this too. I'm glad we're doing it. What if I rewrote it like that? Would the answer still be zero? I would get one. Huh? Now you think it's one? Equal to. The derivative of ln x when x is equal to what? E. Okay, well, what's the derivative of ln x? 1 over x. Okay, and then we're plugging in x is equal to E. 
So I got one over E. Does that make sense? Oh, is it because the E is a middle function? Oh, so you did the derivative of that. Yeah. Oh, no, that, that's, that's the derivative. If you did the derivative of that, then yeah, you would be, you would get a uh, zero on that, but I've never seen them ask you a question like that. Does that make sense what I did? Mr. That never writes anything down. Did you get it? Does that make sense? I didn't see that. Okay, but do you remember the first thing we did over here? Yeah. Where I replaced it with the three? That's kind of why I did that. I don't want people to mess that up. Last limit one I have. Um, the next one I have is semi-tricky, but it really isn't if you really understand the concepts. But it is a Monday, so. All right, ready? Um, I, I have a line. Let's just imagine a line in your head, and it goes through this point. And, and it goes through this point. Okay. Um, this line that I'm talking about, it's actually a tangent line. So there's a tangent line that goes through these points. Tangent line that goes through these points here. Okay. What is F prime? of one equal to. And just throw it in the chat because this one's gonna have an answer, a number answer to it. So we got three and seven. Did anyone else get seven? What about three? Okay, some threes. All right, so, I mean, obviously, I just kind of made this problem up, so it's kind of garbage. Um, obviously, it's not written, like, very well. I used arrows and stuff. But uh, let's just imagine that 1 is here, 7 is here. When in doubt, definitely graph it out. Um, negative 2 here, negative 2 here. And, and it says that there's a tangent line that goes through these points. Um, it doesn't actually matter where it goes i don't think let's just let's just make the line here okay uh so let's just say f i'm gonna draw that in gray here let's just say it does this there's our f doesn't really matter what f is doing um i could have done it here too it shouldn't really matter um but that's basically what i was like looking for like if you were trying to imagine something in your head there's a tangent line and then this is f here and it's saying what's f prime of one so we're looking for the derivative right here at that point. But there's no F equation for us to be able to find that derivative. So how can we find the slope of that point? Rise over run. Yeah, we know another point on it. So you can actually use other clues, this and this, to figure out what that is. So if you did, uh, here, let's use this color. So if you did seven minus negative two divided by one minus negative two, doesn't matter. You get nine over three, so then you do get three. Which that's what kind of a weird way I questioned it though. So if you didn't get that because of the questioning, but um I was just saying it was a tangent line, it goes through those two points. Um I should have said tangent line of F really. See and like looking at this, it's kind of embarrassing. All right, let's go to the next one. Sorry. All right. Um yeah. Um when does it not just be the small thing? From you, it's not so like so. You see how it's just like the rise of the run. Yeah. Like when is it not like that? Uh, I can't think of an example where it wouldn't be. So it's just whenever you're finding a tangent line between two points, it's just the rise of the run. <laughs> if you if you if you're if you're told the tangent line has that, then yes. The main thing I was looking for when I made this problem was just like okay, if I give you one coordinate and another coordinate um, for a tangent line, you need to know the slope of a tangent line is the derivative. So the slope of that line right there is the derivative. And I gave you two points on it. So you should be able to find the slope and then es essentially find that derivative at one. Um, the reason I made it, oh, see, that was, yeah, it was poorly worded because like I said before, I said F prime of one. What if I said F prime of negative two? But then it would still be the same answer. But either way, it was, or it could have been if you assumed, 
By the way, this is Corkery's fault because she says, make up problems. It'll be good if it fails because the kids will like understand that you're human. So, because I like to try to be organized as much as possible sometimes, but this is what happens. Um, I should have said it was a tangent line at X equals one. Because if you drew a tangent line here, let's just say you did this, you can't figure out what F prime of one is now. Because what if, what if you know, this function does this at one? It's tangent based on this one, not that one. Either way, it was a bad question by me. I'm sorry. But you'll also notice that AP always overdoes it with the explanations. It'll say twice differentiable or once differentiable. It'll explain what everything is. But I should have literally wrote, there's a tangent line that goes, um, that grazes here, but it also goes through this point too. Then you could actually find a prime of one. So that's my fault. All right, that's embarrassing. Let's just do a standard problem. Sorry. All right, so let's do, um, let's just, again, I'm making something up, so hopefully this comes out pretty. Let's just do, um, let's do, uh, let's do quotient rule. Let's do 3x minus 1 over 2x plus 4. What I want is the equation of a tangent line of this, of f, at x equals uh, negative 1. Okay, so I'm going to give you a couple minutes to do that. Let's just put it in uh, slope intercept form and then throw the answer in the chat if you have it or just yell it out because we're all friends here. Um, it's just the derivative, so that's what I'm going to find first is the derivative. And then I'm going to plug in negative one. No one got an answer yet? Anybody got an answer they want to share? Did anyone get that for the slope? All right, cool. All right. Did you get that for the slope? Mental math wrong, something? All right, what's the y for this one at x equals negative one? They don't give me the y, so how do I calculate it? Yep, plug it into the f of x equation. So f of negative one, I got Donde. Negative two. Did anyone get negative two? All right, cool. Okay, so then that's going to be, this is just going to be negative 3.5. You add that um, to both sides here. So it's going to be 3.5 minus 2 is 1.5 for your B. So your final answer should just be Y is equal to 7 halves X plus 3 over 2. It didn't actually come out that ugly. By the way, I wasn't blaming Corkery. She was like my mentor. So um, I look up to her a lot. So I'm not saying it's Corkery's fault when I fall on my face with these problems. Um, questions on this? All right, I did want to show you this because I forgot last time um, when we were going over a problem, but I want to show you something that's pretty cool. So uh, go in your graphing calculator and graph that f of x function. So what is it? 3x minus 1, 2x, is it minus or plus, plus 4? Okay, so we're going to graph this. Awesome. 
Now, your calculator will actually find tangent lines. It, this actually would have worked on one of the other problems that I did. Um, when I showed AP this at the training that I went to, they like, like their mind exploded. So um, this is not intuitive at all. So definitely pay attention. So you have the graph. You have to hit second draw or second program, and it brings you this screen right here. And the fifth choice, it says tangent. So hit five. Now, again, very non-user friendly because it just brings you to the screen. It's like, hey, I hit tangent. Why isn't it making me do anything? It is. It's waiting for an input. It doesn't even look like it's waiting for an input, but it's waiting for the X value that we're, that we're inputting. In this case, it was negative one because the problem said negative one right here. What we're going to do is I'm going to write negative one. It doesn't seem like you would do that, but you do. And you hit enter. It draws it on the screen and gives you the equation right here. Look at that. That's insane. 3.5 X plus 1.5. That's amazing. Okay, ignore all the point zero 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 three five. You know, you have to ignore all that because again, it's just counting error. But isn't that cool? That would have helped with that one that we did with the cosine, like cosine k. If you remember the k, some of cosine k, you could have used that on this. Use this on that. I should say. Anyway, fun little fact there. All right. Uh, let's see if I cover everything I wanted. I guess so. All right. Do we need a break? Do you want to take a break? Okay. Well, then we'll just keep going here. Next thing I wanted to cover. If it's continuous but not differentiable, make sure you understand what that means. Okay, if a, the graph of a function is continuous but not differentiable. So if it was a sharp turn without any holes, jumps, or gaps, it would be not differentiable here because of that sharp turn. Okay, you should already know that, but I just wanted to throw that out there because it's things that people forget sometimes. <clears throat> um, okay, so we're going to do a complicated problem. I'm sorry, an easy problem, and then we'll do a complicated problem. So this will be fun. Related to what I just went over with that sharp turn thing. All right. Let's say that f of x is equal to uh, x plus 2 if x is less than or equal to 3, and then 4x minus 7 if x is greater than 3. Okay. Now, what I want you to figure out is the... Uh, whether this is true or false. This is just a straight up true or false question. Oops, that's embarrassing. But true or false for A, true or false for B, and then there's a C as well. All right, for A, does anybody have a thought for that one? Does the limit of f of x as x approaches 3 exist? True or false? You said yes? We got one true. Does anyone say false? Okay, if you remember, the limit has to agree on both sides, so that's where it's less than 3 and where it's greater than 3. We don't need to worry about the equals because I, um, that would technically just be an island. It would be a point at the equals. You can only approach with limits, so you don't need to worry about the equal sign. So if you plug in 3 to this one, you would get a 5. If you plug 3 into this one, you would also get a 5. So true is correct. And what about B? Is B true or false? You can throw it in the chat or you can just unmute and tell everybody. Is it continuous? Remember, to be continuous, it has to agree on both sides, which we already proved that it did. But it also has to be equal where it agrees on both sides to that one individual point. Is that true? Yes, true. Thank you. It is true. Okay. I don't know why I wrote true. Um, this one right here shows where it's equal. 
as well. If you just plug in three, it's five. These both agree, so it is true as well. Okay, and then the last one, is it differentiable? Does the derivative agree on both sides of that three? Of x equals three. No, so this would be a false. Okay, so this top one, the derivative would be one at three. This one would be four. So that means there's a jump with a derivative anyway, and it would be false. Okay, questions on any of those? Because I'm going to like give you a really complicated one. Like you're going to want to cry. Not really. It's an AP level. It's not one of those crazy ones like before. Yeah, but you have to understand what I just went over to get this problem. So here we go. No questions? People at home? Thank you, Adish. So we're going to say f of x is equal to, let's just do cx plus d x squared minus cx. And this is for x is less than or equal to 2. This is x for x is greater than 2. All right. So I'm going to tell you that c and d are constants. I don't feel like writing that down, but they're constants, c and d. Okay. And I'm also going to say that f is differentiable at 2, at x equals 2. So that's differentiable. c and d are constants. So what I want you to figure out is what is c plus d? Okay, I'm telling you that it's differentiable at two, and I'm telling you that C and D are constants. I don't think you need anything else, but I'm probably wrong. Let's say overlooking something here. Okay, again, similar to what you did in the previous problem, only more abstract because we don't know what C and D are. Um, the other one it asks for is it continuous? Is it differentiable? I'm telling you that it's differentiable at two which means that it's already continuous. This is crazy. Top derivative, someone said C. Here, we'll just write F prime. Is C, the bottom one was 2X minus C. Okay, but I said it's differentiable at two. So what you can do is plug a two in for this X. So you're gonna be left with C is equal to two times two minus C. Does that help you find C? It does. Okay. So here's the derivative of this, but it's at x equals two. So that means this right here is two. Oh, this was the other derivative. I thought this was a c arrow to the two. Get rid of that arrow. Sorry. Um, so it's two times two minus c. So you end up with uh, two c is equal to four. So c is equal to two. Did you get that? C is two? Yeah. Okay. I know what I did. I just, I didn't around the top of the bottom. I just set them equal to each other. Now, you can also, you also have to set them equal to each other as well because that's the limit definition of continuity. The pieces have to approach on both sides have to be equal to each other. This is where it's also at the exact spot. So you can also use limit continuity, um, limit definition of continuity for that. Um, so you're plugging two in and you're going to get 2C plus d is equal to, now plug in 2 over here, you're going to get 4 minus 2c. Yes. Okay. Well, you know what c is. So that's 4. This is 4. So you're going to add that over to be 8. That's embarrassing. Let's do negative 8. Uh, negative 8 minus, here, let's do that. Sorry, negative 4. Okay. So then you add these two together and you do end up with a negative two here. Awesome. Proud of you. Just to make me proud. All right. So that's basically all of 2.1. Um, everything I just showed you differentiability continuity um one of the main reasons why uh, i'm not going over 213 the estimating derivatives is because it's super easy i just don't want to waste class time going over that okay so estimating derivatives 213 you can work on that on your own i do want to work on stuff from 2.2 now 2.2 is all about derivative rules 
So these, I didn't even bother writing any problems down because I can just make them up. So let's, uh, let's make one up here. So we're going to do f of x is equal to, let's do um, x squared minus 3 over, um, let's do 3x minus 6 to the fourth power. What I want to know is, what's the derivative of this thing? And it involves a lot of rules on this, okay? So overall, if you look at the whole function, f of x, just the whole function, not the little intricacies, what rule are you going to need for the whole thing, just looking at it? Quotient rule, okay? Now let's dive deeper. Just the numerator, what, do we, what rule are we going to need for that? Power rule. The denominator, what rule are we going to need for that? Power rule and chain rule, right? Because it's a function inside of a function. So it's a quotient rule, and then inside the quotient rule, there's another power rule, there's another chain rule as well. Okay? So it's a little crazy. So get after that one. I'm going to slowly start doing it, though, just because I don't want anyone at home being mad at me and going, why is he expecting us to do this? I don't even know what's going on right now. So I will slowly start doing it, but... Uh, it is the week of a test, so you should have some kind of inkling of how to do this. Okay. Plus, this is more of like a procedural problem. It's not like a, you know, tricky problem. It's just you're following the process. Okay. You're still not writing anything down? I failed you as a teacher. I can't even motivate you to write stuff down. Uh, no, I wouldn't. You mean like expand out the, the denominator? No, I would keep it messy. It's fine. Yeah, it's more, it's more about the practice for this one. Um, it, I'm assuming this comes out really bad, but that's okay. That's embarrassing. Oh, I see what you mean by simplifying. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think AP would do that. So maybe that's a good idea. I mean, if it's free response, it wouldn't matter. So good call. Thanks for uh, pointing that out. Oh, I see. And then you can distribute more. Wow. Ah, see, this is Corkery's fault again. Turned into an algebra lesson. <laughs> oh, this is the best. I did not know this was going to happen, but it is still something you should know. You you have seen problems like this if you've done the practice problems, because I do give them this way. If you stopped at the orange, I would have been fine with that. Again, if it's true response, but uh, there is a common factor um, in the numerator and denominator. So that's what I was uh, canceling out there. I divided the top and the bottom by 3x minus 6 quantity cubed. Okay, so that's why the yellow has things crossed out. Then from there, I distributed 
what well, wasn't canceled out anymore. So I distributed everything out like that. Um, you get something like that. Should have put a negative there technically. All right, so minus 12x plus, oops. All right, this is if you like went crazy and decided to do all the algebra on it. Did you get that? If you simple, okay. I didn't feel like checking my work. It's just easier to ask your kid. <laughs> oh, it's gotta be right. Cool. Again, if you got the orange, I'm happy with that. I just kind of want to throw all the rules at you at once. Generally speaking, if you can do quotient rule, you can do product rule. So I'd rather give you the harder of the two. Um, are there any questions on what I did there? So, okay. Uh, so that's a lot of 2.2. Um, let's do... Can I give you like a semi tricky one? So, okay, no one's gonna get mad. It's not like a super trick though. It's like stuff you see on AP. Um, I don't know if we're gonna have time to do those crazy ridiculous problems like we did last unit. If we do, it'll be like, you know, Wednesday or something. So let's do this. Uh, there's a line and the equation of the line is this. Okay. If I follow my face on this one, I apologize ahead of time. K is a constant. Okay. Um, this line, okay, this line right here is tangent to um, this equation here. I do a lot of threes and ones because that's like my initials. So if you're wondering why, like, why I always use the same numbers, it's just, I should think of different ones. Okay, it's tangent to this. Um, Um, I think that's all the information you need. What is K equal to? Oh. <laughs> By the way, I don't laugh because it's difficult. I laugh because it's like a lot of thinking. Like some people are like, oh, you just love seeing students suffer with a hard problem. No, you don't have to even do this. I don't, I don't like enjoy suffering. I just, when you have to use different parts of your brain and you're like, I don't know, fully working out the math muscles. I don't know. I just love that. So I don't mean to laugh like negatively. This, um, when in doubt, graph it out. So that's what I'm going to do is graph. All right. So this equation, I'm just going to rewrite it really quick as uh, y equals negative x plus k. Okay. We don't know what k is, but you can just kind of imagine. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to draw it there. Um, that doesn't really go with what Adish said, but that's okay. Um, and then x squared plus three x plus one. I'm not gonna go, I'm not gonna bother even trying to figure out what that graph looks like. I know you can find the vertex and all that other stuff. I really don't care, um, but we're doing something like this, okay? Not accurate at all, doesn't matter. As long as you understand what you're looking for. If anything, if I just got rid of the, the coordinate plane here, the x and the y axes here, you would it would kind of be accurate-ish, right? Maybe. Yeah, it would have to be because it has to be the negative there. Anyway, um, it's not to scale what I'm drawing, but it gives me an idea of what I'm looking at. Okay, it's kind of like when people draw stick figures, like it's just a person. It doesn't need to be accurate. You understand what it represents. Okay, XKCD, right? But you, you, you don't, you don't go on that webcomic? No. Oh, that's embarrassing. Sorry, I thought you did. Sorry. Um, it, it's a webcomic where they use stick figures to show certain concepts it doesn't matter sorry okay um so we're looking for something like this we're looking for what is k okay and k is going to be some y-intercept of that y okay. all right well what is the slope at this point that it's grazing right here what is the slope of that negative one, negative one. how do you know the slope is negative one there negative it's negative x Look at this, negative one. Okay. So this means that at this point, let's just call this point A, at y prime of A, it's equal to negative one. Okay. Well, where is this 
whole thing right here equal to negative one? The slope, I'm sorry. What point has this have a slope of negative one? Well, let's find the slope equation first, also known as the derivative. 2x plus 3. And we're looking for when it's equal to negative 1. Okay, what x value? In this case, it's this a value here, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, um, so you subtract that off, you get negative 2. Yes. Okay, negative 2. Okay, that's where the x happens. Well, if you know the x, then you know the y, because we have a y equation right here. So we can actually figure out what this is right here. Okay, unless. There's some fancier way of doing it than that. Some shortcut. Um, come on. Okay. We have y is equal to negative x plus k. It's at x equals negative 2. So negative negative 2 is 2 plus k. But what's the y value here? When x is negative 2, what's the y value? It's not k. This orange right here is this, this right here. Okay, you just plug negative 2 into this equation. So you get 4 minus 6 plus 2. So negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Okay, and you do get what Adish said. I don't know where it will be. I think it's an x plus b. k is equal to negative 3. Okay. Holy cow. Right. You will be expected to be able to do stuff like this. Okay. And um, the first thing I did when I looked at this was like, holy cow, how do I even figure out anything about the derivative? I'm like, oh, the line has a slope of negative one. That means I can set the derivative equal to negative one and figure out where that tangent line, just one coordinate on it. All I need is one coordinate because it's y equals negative x plus k. If I have the x and the y, I can solve for the k. So I need the x and the y. So I solve for the x, that's the negative two. You plug it back into the y equation and then you get the y. And then you just solve for k from there. Okay. Questions on this? All right. Um, we got time for one more before the five minute warning here. Let me uh, shrink all this down. This one won't be too bad comparatively, at least I hope not. All right, so we're going to say that f of x is equal to 4x cubed minus 5x plus 3. Oh, this is just a basic one. I did this out of order. That's embarrassing. Hold up one second. Yeah, my bad. I did this out of order. It doesn't matter. Um, all I want is the equation of a tangent line of this at x equals negative 1. <clears throat> we kind of already did one of these, but I did this out of order. I was supposed to do this one first and then the complicated one. Might be, might be. All right. Did anyone get an answer? Go. 7x plus 11. 7x plus 11. Did anyone else get that? Okay, that is the answer, very good. Yep, 7x plus 11 is the answer. I guess I'll work it out really quick and then you can have your five minutes. Um, first thing I needed, so we're looking for the y equals mx plus b. But this m that we're looking for is a special m. It's the m of the tangent line because we're looking for the equation of a tangent line. Well, the slope of a tangent line is equal to the derivative of f of x. In this case, we're actually looking for the slope at negative 1. Okay. So first thing we need to do is find our f prime equation, f prime of x. So it's going to be 12x squared minus 5 for the derivative. And then what we're going to do is plug in negative 1. So you're going to get 12 minus 5. So you're going to get 7, which is the slope he had. So that means we have y is equal to 7x plus b. Now, I always do it in slope-intercept form because it's the worst. Like, it's the hardest one to do, hardest one to set up. It's not like it's complicated, but compared to the other ones, it's, it's harder. Um, so you're going to get negative 7 
plus B. If you plug negative one into this, you're going to get negative four plus five is one plus three is four. And then add seven to the other side, you get B is equal to 11. So your final answer is this right here.